Hello and welcome to Mark's Madness. Joined by Mark Miller, I'm Matt Finkel. And Mark, week two was an interesting yeah. one out there. We had some weather issues and that lightning, it was like a light show in the sky when I was driving. It affected almost every game in the area. Well, it was so widespread and, and at halftime we were at Spencerville and at halftime Mark Shine and I looked off to the west and we could see it. And you knew it was just a matter of time. We got about four plays in and they called it. So. Yeah, it, it, that plays havoc, not only with our schedule, <laughs> right. but uh, the players and the schools and everybody had to adjust, but at least they got them all in on Saturday, for the most part. Some of them just said Friday night's enough. Right. We, uh, some, the athletic directors did a great job getting the rescheduling mm -hmm. in, and, and some teams had to call their games. And Marion Local, for example, we talked about them last week. They went up to Michigan, the Detroit area. They ended up playing a quarter and a half and then had to call it due to lightning, and, and they, yeah. you know, you're not going to return right. back there the night the day after, but how does the lightning affect the, the teams coming? You take, yeah. you know, you're in the middle of a game and then all of a sudden you're taking some time off and then you got to go pick up where you left off. How do you think that affects the players? Well, I think it's hard. It's hard on schedules. You know, football, you know, we're habit people. You know, you get into a routine. You want to use that routine. Coaches had to adjust their Saturday morning schedules and when are we going to review the film? When are we going to start game planning? So all of that's a part of it, but you know, they're young, they can adjust. I think a biggest part of it is you're probably gonna wake up Saturday with some aches and pains that you didn't have on Friday. You know, you get banged around, especially if you played a half or two and a half quarters, and now you gotta, you know, come out there and get loose again and play again. I, I looked at the scores to see if it, it affected, in a large degree, somebody that was losing on Friday came back and won on Saturday. You, you saw a couple, Delphi St. John's was ahead of LCC by one, or, or the, the other way around, right. LCC was ahead by one, seven to six, and Delphi St. John's won. Uh, Wapak was down to Kenton, eight to nothing, and they turned around and won. But those are one possession games, and they ended up being close games. I don't think that had an effect. A lot of times they say it's hard on the traveling teams. You gotta go home on the bus, you gotta unload. You gotta get back on the bus the next day and come. Uh, but you know what? It seemed like a lot of the visiting teams won the close games. You know, again, Wapak went to Kenton and won a close one. Delphi St. John's came back to LCC and won a close one. Uh, Elida went to Defiance and won, not even a close one. Right. So I guess the kids are flexible. The coaches are. A couple of years ago, we had lots of lightning. Maybe they're just more used to it. But yeah. I don't think it had a great effect on the outcomes of the game. Certainly messed around with the Kenton. Uh, group planning to go up and see Maddie Mock play in Toledo on Saturday because right. now their team was playing again on Saturday. So, yeah, it's just inconvenient. Yeah, that was the big inconvenience for Kenton because they were all excited to go see Maddie yeah. play. But, yeah. you know, for now, the games were finished and great job by the ADs and, yeah. and everybody and to get those games in. One of the games that had a delay was Coldwater Bishop Hartley. And in that game, there was a major injury. Hoyne went down with a, with a knee injury and did not return. Yeah. And major because he's such a great player on such a great team and so important to that team. As it turns out, not major, major in that he had to undergo surgery and he's out for the year. Uh, the last word that I've, I've heard about was sprained MCL. Uh, out anywhere from two to four weeks, you know, uh, they're hoping for closer to the two side and, and certainly Brady was in, or Brody was in, in uh, great shape and, and he'll rehab and I'm sure they're getting him the best medical care possible. But, you know, they had to replace him with basically two guys because Brody is the, the runner and he is the passer. He's a lot of so that offense. Jack Hemmelbegarn came in as a quarterback and nine of 14 and a couple of touchdowns. Real Jack nice did job. the passing part, did a good job. Chris Post got more carries, got 14 carries. Um, you know, the week before Brody got all the carries, you know, 55 yards. So you got to take two guys to replace one, but they, they did it admirably. They did it uh, to the point where they could win and beat a good program. And so uh, now they go to Minster. Minster's 2-0 and also, and they're pretty good. And so you don't like to lose Brody going to Minster, but, uh, you know, Cavaliers will be up to the task, I think. Yeah, impressive that they were still able to get the victory. And Brody talked about it in our prep profile, how <laughs> yeah. he wanted to avoid injury. And yeah. I think he was referencing some of the, his teammates, and yeah. he ends up the one getting hurt, yeah. and hopefully he'll get back out there. We don't want to see him on the sideline for his senior That's year. True. Well, you know, injuries is a great equalizer. Always you know, is. And, and uh, so we hope that it doesn't affect that, that team's uh, season too much. Looking forward now, we talked about it in the start of the show. Wapak Kenton was one of the great games mm -hmm. in the area, and Kenton is now 0-2. Can you believe that? Um, well, I, no, I can't believe that, and I'm sure they can't either, but they've played two really, really good teams. And so you look at that and say, eh, okay, you wish you'd have played them at the end of the year. You'd have had a lot of momentum going, but, you know, it comes right down to the wire. There's six seconds left, and Cody Morgan hits Cameron Lauk with a two-yard touchdown pass, and they ended up winning. I don't know what down it was, but even if it was – First down, they only had one play left with right, six, six seconds. seconds. So, you know, uh, Clutch right there yeah, at the end. Would they have 
tried to kick, uh, you know, it didn't matter kicking a field goal. They had to score a touchdown, so they were going to go for it no matter what the thing was. But, you, you know, you look at Wapak, um, you know, that's a big win on the road. And, and, you know, I don't know what their slogan for this year is, but it could well be the Road Warriors, you know, because they, they can't. They've got to play Elida this week. Yeah. That's not easy. Then, week five, they go to Salina. That looks like that might be a heck of a matchup. Of course, Salina's at OG this week. That could determine a little bit. And then, at St. Mary's week eight, we all know that Doug Fry's at St. Mary's. So, they're going to have to, to win this league, they're going to have to win some huge games on the road. But that win at Kenton was as big as it gets. It does seem like some of their biggest games this year are on the road. But they're off to a great start. Yeah. And Travis Moyer really has that group working well. And such a close game. And we knew it would be a great game going in. And it's decided on the final play. We love yep. to see that here. Time for a break on Mark's Madness. When we return, we're going to break down a couple of plays from that Delphi St. John's LCC game, which you saw right here on WOSN. We'll be right back. Second down here on Mark's Madness, and it's time to break down a play from the previous week's game, or in this case, a couple of plays. We're going to look at the LCC St. John's game, which you saw right here on WOSN, and St. John's has the ball to start it off in the first quarter. Well, Nick Marks throws it out there, and that ball was tipped. You'll see it again on the replay, but Aaron Rindell, 46 yards, takes it in. That's a huge play, but you, you wonder why coaches do all those stupid drills they do a tip drill where a first guy tips it and the next guy catches it. That's why. Right there. Reaction time. Aaron did a great job of focusing on that ball, getting it, and then the speed got him in the end zone. So that opened up the scoring. Let's jump to the second quarter now and LCC with the answer. Well, Ethan O'Connor in the big arm. He throws a rainbow all the way down there. Nick Tafflinger, that's a 50-yard touchdown. Now, I want, I want you to look at the protection. Why can... Um, Ethan stand back there, count the house, step forward and throw that thing about 55 yards in the air. Look at the protection. No defender in his face. The guy right down the middle is Tafflinger. He had his arm up very early. You saw that when we looked at it. He said, I'm going to be open. Sure enough, he was an LCC with a big answer to a long touchdown pass. Now jump to the end of the third. It's a 7-6 game and this was the deciding score. Well, Nick Martz again. He's a good runner as well as a passer. Fakes that uh, counter play, but I want you to look at the left guard and left tackle. They're pulling right there. Bang. He turns out. Bang. Hole up inside. Linebackers couldn't get to him. Safeties couldn't find him. Touchdown, Delphi St. John's and Nick Martz. And they go on to win by a score of 20 to 7, and that was the big deciding play, and, yeah. and Nick Martz hit that hole hard. Very close game. LCC has been involved in two pretty close games. Mm -hmm. And first week against Bath, that one against St. John's. St. John's also been involved in some two close games. The overtime win over Elida in week one, and then that win against LCC. So great play out there on the field. Mark Miller doing a great job breaking it down as always. Time for another break. When we come back, we're going to preview some of the week three games we have our eye on. Welcome back to Mark's Madness. Mark, let's talk about some of the conferences. Uh, some conference play did open up in week two. The NWC had some conference games as well. WBL had all conference games, mm -hmm. I believe. So NWC, interesting, four teams with a 2-0 record atop yeah. that league right now. That's right. Spencerville, Grove, Crestview, Jefferson. Out of those, I think you would say Grove is a surprise. You know, down year last year, off to a 2-0 start. Those other three, you know, they were at the top last year. Yep. So, you know, that's not a, a big surprise, but they're playing very well. 11-5. That's pretty good. Very you good. Know, that's a 69% winning percentage. So the, the Northwest Conference doing themselves proud. Four teams undefeated. That's half the, half the league, you know. So uh, they're good. We, we thought they'd be good top to bottom. Definitely. Chris Summers doing a good job at Jefferson, too. He was the athletic director now first year as the head coach, and he's picking up right where that team left off last year. Yeah. And how about the Western Buckeye League? We've got three teams at the top, 2-0 and record, and we've also got a handful of 0-2s, and, and yeah, some cool. are surprising. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, Kenton, you know, 0-2, right. of course, you, we know who they've played, but that, that's right. We've got OG, Wapak, and Salina that are 2-0. and We've talked a lot about Wapak. OG, you know, opened up well and beat Van Wert last week. Salina, a huge win against Bath, but now those two teams play. Yeah. So one of those, you know, undefeated record two goes uh, by the wayside for now. But, um, you know, 9-9 nine and nine overall, but, you know, they beat up on each other this week. Half the team's lost, so, you know, 50% winning percentage isn't very good. But, yeah, three 2-0s, four 0-2s. Oh 
That's a feast or famine in that league right Absolutely. Now. And yeah. it will be decided later. I mean, we when we in the beginning of the season when we looked at that Kenton Wapak game, mm -hmm. kind of thought to ourselves, maybe that's the de facto championship game. Not anymore. Yeah. Not at all. Not some anymore. some yeah. other teams came out swinging, right. and it's going to be decided late into the season. Although anybody's got Kenton on their schedule yet, it's probably saying, oh man, I wish I'd have played them early. Right. They're going to get better and better each week. Yeah. They will improve. Yeah. How about the VVC? They had mm -hmm. some conference games, and yep. Arlington off to a strong start. Ooh. Yeah, they great defense, 60 to 6. They've only given up six points. There's a couple other teams in the area that haven't been scored on yet. Spencerville's one, but yeah, they're playing very well. Uh, you know, five teams with 2 0 records. Now it's a, four, a 12 team league, you know, but still, that's really good. Liberty Benton, Van Buren, Arlington, Macomb, North Baltimore. North Baltimore is new to the mix. Right. The surprise in there for me is Van Buren. We all kind of thought that they were on the verge. And they had a great summer. You did a, a great preview show on them. From ONU? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they took them away. It reminded me a little bit of, uh, you know, remember the Titans kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And it's working. They're playing really well. And they're, they got some talent. So, And I know a couple of the other coaches have said, look out for Van Buren. They're going to be pretty good. So, uh, yeah, BBC's playing good. 14 and 10 overall. That's a pretty good winning percentage. But, you know, we talk about these leagues, and it all comes back to the MAC, doesn't it? It, it always does. does. Now, here, here is part of the reason that they've got such a great winning percentage. They haven't played a league game yet. They haven't beaten each other that starts yet. this that week starts this week but they Still are though. they are 14 and 6 right overall 70 percent winning six teams half of or 60 percent of their teams are 2 and 0. yeah that means they do pretty well non-league you know now they're going to start playing each other so they're going to start beating each other up and they'll beat up on each other but yeah. that's what we expect out of the mac yeah. especially yeah. in those non-league games and they have delivered that's thus right. far so yeah. let's now take a look at week three okay we've got some great games on our broadcast schedule yeah. and but first let's start in the mac though there's one that's that you really have your eye on and we yeah. mentioned it a little before and there'll be cold water without brody hoyne against that's minster right. and and, I, and that's why this, this was going to be a good game anyway minster started off very strong they're pretty good eli wolf is, is you know going to eastern michigan he's a good player it's going to be the eastern michigan guys against each other yeah. but now brody will be watching from the sideline and that's why i think it's even a more key game is that hoying is out um going to minster you know so you're on the road um this this is this will be a battle you know this will have something to do with that uh, championship of course marion local sitting there waiting for whoever wins this one but uh, nonetheless, this, this will be a big game in the MAC. Big game, big yeah. game. And then also yeah. we've got Wapaki Lider oh. we talked about a little. Great WBL matchup. Yeah. You can see that one on Saturday at 9 on WOSN. Yeah. Piqua Lima Sr., also a Saturday broadcast yeah. game for us Yeah, this that's week. two 2-0 and o teams, you know. So that'll be pretty interesting. I don't think Piqua has, has played great teams yet, but, you know, they're coming into Lima and a chance for Mike Fell's group to go 3-0. and o, So you know, continue that trek towards uh, respectability. You know, we talked about conferences. We didn't mention the track because Lima Senior is the only local team in the track. They're Finley struggling. And Lima Senior, They're yeah. struggling, man. Yeah. That team, uh, you know, the two that everybody picked to maybe win the state, Whitmer and, and Central Catholic, they're both one and one. Right. They got upset. Now they play good teams. But, but uh, you know, Lima Senior, you know, here they go. Let's, let's keep winning and sneak into that thing a little Make bit. Make some noise yeah. on the track yeah, for sure. Yeah, be fun. Yeah, Where are you and, this you know, week got, as well? Well, I'm a, I got the Elida Wapak thing. Okay. That'll be a good game. And you talk, whoever set up the schedule did a great job. Salina at OG is a great game, you know. And then Wayne Trace and Crestview, you know, there could be a hundred points scored in that game. That you game, know, yeah. you can see that one yeah. on uh, at 11:15 on WTLW. You can thank Ben Wright for setting up oh, such man. a good schedule. We've yeah. got some of the great best games. games in the area. Yeah. Should be a lot of fun week three. Well, that's going to do it on this edition of Mark's Madness. Thank you, Mark, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time on WOSN.